Speaker Moody's bill relating to access to certain law enforcement corrections and prosecutorial records under the public information law. The chair recognizes Speaker Moody to explain his bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members, House Bill 147 closes a significant loophole in our public information law that's had tragic consequences for Texas families and Texas transparency. Our public information law was designed to keep the public informed about what its government is doing, so disclosure is the standard. Any exceptions are meant to be narrow and serve important competing public interests. Law enforcement records have always been part of that. However, back in 1997, we created an exception designed to protect innocent citizens. If records relate to an investigation that didn't result in a conviction or deferred adjudication, they're exempt from disclosure. The idea was that cit citizens targeted by investigations that didn't go anywhere shouldn't have public suspicion cast over them. The unintended loophole is this. In cases in which a person dies, like a police shooting or a death in custody, there's obviously never a conviction or any plea at all. That makes all records about that death confidential forever. That was never the intention of the exception, which was meant to protect the people under investigation, not the police. And I don't say that to take anything away from the amazing work our peace officers do. And the vast majority of them are doing nothing wrong. The, the bottom line, though, is that these records belong to the public. Government transparency is government transparency, even when it's not pretty. Beyond that, families like the ones you'll hear from today deserve to know what happened to their loved one. And when what happened is wrong, they deserve justice. The unintended consequences of our current law are denying them that closure. I'll let them tell their own stories, but I do want to point out a few things. First, this bill doesn't change any other existing exceptions. For example, if there's an ongoing investigation or prosecution related to the records, then those are protected from disclosure the same as they are today. Second, this isn't something unprecedented. These records were open to the public for more than two decades before this exception was created, and the sky didn't fall then. It won't fall if this bill passes now. Third, there's language in the bill about internal affairs records. That's there to prevent some departments from using another loophole. Without it, in almost every case, they can withhold the records by saying that an internal investigation revealed no wrongdoing, which is another exception to the Public Information Act. However, the intention of my bill isn't to open up all internal affairs records. It's to deal with situations where law enforcement is involved in a death. So we're working with stakeholders uh, on tighter language, limited to that situation. And I want to say that I very much appreciate the professionals uh, the law enforcement professionals who respected me and the years of work I've done to support law enforcement enough to talk to me before today about their concerns. I want them to know that I hear those loud and clear and they have my commitment to resolve that issue. All this is about is closing a loophole and shining a light on incidents where our government is involved in the loss of a life, which the public and the families affected deserve to have a complete picture of. With that, I'm happy to answer any questions and reserve my right to close. I always appreciate it when people come tell me they're opposing my bill before, uh, prior to the day of the committee hearing. So I'm, great, I'm grateful they did that, and uh, thank you for working with them. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members. I appreciate your, your patience in, in working through this. I know it's uh, certainly not an easy issue, and I appreciate everyone for coming forward. I, I hear and respect the concerns some of our witnesses have testified about, which is why I've already committed to fixing the internal affairs concern. Also um, heard the concerns about the privacy of those in law enforcement that have lost a loved one. Uh, lost a colleague, and so um, that is something that I think we we can certainly address as well. Um, I also know, um, you know, I know peace officers do an impossible job, and they face an incredible external pressure while they do it, and I'm sensitive to families who might want as much privacy as possible. But I also strongly believe in the principles behind the Public Information Act, and Mr. Dyer actually uh, took my clothes in his statement when he read to you from the policy statement in the Texas Public uh, text government code chapter 552 but I want to reiterate the last two sentences of that that is a law today and that reads as follows the people in delegating authority do not give their public servants the right to decide what is good for the people to know and what is not good for them to know the people insist on remaining informed so that they may retain control over the instruments they have created that is a default setting in our law members it's better for people to know the truth even if it's ugly and complicated and challenging than for the truth to be withheld 
And in those rare cases we choose differently, it should be, it should be through a reasoned, intentional decision, not a mistake. A mistake is exactly what this bill aims to correct, and I urge you to consider, once we come back to you with some amendments, to report it favorably and send it to the Calendars Committee. Thank you with that. Chairman Destel. Uh, just, uh, <clears throat> Joe, on the, the exceptions, is deceased and then the, our, our consents. I, I don't know, you may want to consider is, conce is deceased or incapacitated because just most of, a lot of these people, these injuries could have just resulted in being a vegetable or whatever. The family would still want to see this, and it. That is that, that, that is that is a very real situation that we've, that we've considered trying to address, uh, and um, drawing that drawing that line is is certainly a piece of what where the discussions are at. I mean, I know other, um, ser you know, other threshold serious bodily injury, you know, incapacitation, things of like that. I mean, there are ways that we can look at that. I, I agree that that is something that probably we probably do need to address, yeah. where someone is essentially. Uh, in, a, in a in a permanent vegetative state. All right. Thank you, Speaker Moody. The chair moves to leave House Bill 147 pending at this time.